Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And this time we'll be looking at character rigging. And I will be giving you this pre-built robot model and we'll be looking at creating an armature for it and then linking it to the individual components of the character so that it can be animated. Now this is very much an introduction to character rigging and I've tried to keep things simple but I hope you'll still find lots that is useful in here. So let's make a start on this. So I'll be giving you a link to download this basic scene that's got the character in it. It's got a camera and some lights, it's got a room and you'll see that there's a collection called Robot that's got all the component parts of the robot in it. So as you can see, I can hide the bits that I don't want to see. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to disable the room so we don't need to see that. And I'm going to come to the solid mode, hit one on the keyboard and then just zoom in like this. So we're looking at the front view of our character. I'm also going to be in X-ray mode here. So toggle that on so we can see through everything because this is important as we build our skeleton. So to build the skeleton, we're going to come to object mode. We're going to come to add and armature and single bone. Now there are other armature options here you'll notice. You might not have them because by default the preference for them is not enabled. I'll just mention them but we're not actually going to be using that but it's, it's well worth knowing that this stuff is also there. If you come to edit and preferences and you come to add-ons and you type rigify you'll see that this there's a built-in add-on called rigify and enabling this checkbox here enables those other own options if you're wondering why you're not seeing them here. So anyway, we're going to come back to add and armature. And what we're going to do is add a single bone like this. And you'll see it comes in, its base is down here at the ground level. What we're going to do is first of all is just use the Z location and I'm going to situate that just here. So that base is just here on that sort of pelvic region there. And then I'm going to reduce the scale so that the top of it is sort of sitting in his breastplate there, just, just around here. Now you'll notice that we've got in our collection here, we've got something called armature. And if we open it up, you'll see we've got one bone in it and it's this bone here. So I'm going to select that and I'm actually going to call that root because it's, it's very important to kind of keep a tabs on what bones are which. So this is going to be the sort of the root of the, the entire skeleton. So then what we're going to do is we're going to come into edit mode and then we're going to select that nub at the top, not the bone itself. So that's the bone you can see selected. That's the nub selected there. And we're going to hit E on the keyboard for extrude. And then we're going to drag out to that shoulder joint there. Hopefully you can see. And you can see we've added a new bone. And then I'm going to hit E again, so we can extend this even further. And I'm going to drag it to this elbow joint here. E again, drag it out to the wrist joint, and E and drag it out to the ends of the fingers. And let's just come to the top view. So that's seven on the number pad. And we just want to make sure these are all aligned uh, correctly with those joints. So that one's a little bit off. Let's just move that down there. The wrist one as well is a little bit off. This is not too important, but again, let's just line it up like that. And one to come back to the front orthographic view. I'm going to come back to the exact placement of the elbow joint later on, but let's carry on for now. So then let's again select the top of the root bone and we want to make two joints, one for the neck and one for the head. This time we're going to use a constraint, so EZ, so we're only extruding directly upwards like that, and EZ again till we're off the top of the head like that. So again if we come to three for the side view, we just want to nudge this one so it's lined up with that neck roller joint. So there, like that. So then when we come to actually animate the head, the head will rotate on that roller joint there. So come back to the front view. So now we need to think about 
the hips and the legs. So it is a little bit different, as I will explain it later on, but we're, again, we're going to select that nub at the bottom. Make sure we're in edit mode. We're going to hit E to extrude. We're going to extrude it to that ball joint there. E again and extrude it down to that knee joint. E again, extrude it down to the ankle joint. E and extrude it down to the foot. And let's come to the side view. So that's three on the number pad. Again, let's just make sure everything is lined up. You just need to sort out that foot joint and I'm just gonna drag it off the front of the foot like that. Actually, maybe this one could do with a little bit of a nudge as well. And again, I'm going to come back to the exact placement for the knee joint later on. So now we've got the entirety of the left hand side or the character's left hand side built. But there are a couple of extra bones that I want to add before we mirror it over to the other side. And I want to explain why. So what we're going to do is come over to pose mode from this menu here. And we grab one of these bones and we hit G to move it. You'll see that I can move that bone there. But if I wanted to kind of pose the entire arm, I'd have to move that one and I'd have to move that one. And it's a little bit laborious, but there is a way, if I undo both of those, that we can apply a control bone to this joint here and then the whole arm moves with it and it's a much more intuitive way of working. So this way, this default way is called forward kinematics. And what we're going to do is we're going to create inverse kinematics, which is commonly known as IK. So let's come back again to edit mode and let's select this nub here, the one on the wrist, and then E to extrude and then Y for the direction. So that's going to go backwards and drag it backwards like that. And then we've created another bone on that intersection. Now, what we need to do with this bone is with it selected, we need to hit option P. So you can see that shortcut there and then select clear parent. So we want to actually disconnect this from the rest of the armature as it were. So then what we're going to do is we're going to come into pose mode. We're going to select this bone. We're going to shift select this forearm bone. And then we're going to do shift control and C. You can see that shortcut here. And what we want to select from this is the inverse kinematics, like so. And you'll see that it's created a sort of orange bone here and this dotted line down to the base of the root bone. And now if we grab this bone, you'll see that moving that joint moves everything all the way down to the base of the spine. Now, in actual fact, we don't want to move it all the way down to the base of the spine. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this orange bone here and we're going to come down to the bone constraints here, this one here at the bottom. And here where it says chain length, we can choose how far the inverse kinematics works down the chain. We only actually want it to go to this joint here, to the, the shoulder joint. So we're going to actually just have a chain length of two. And I think you can see that dotted line now only goes to the shoulder. And so if I now grab that joint, we can do the thing that I was talking about, which is we can just use the, the wrist bone and we can get this very natural sort of movement all the way back through the rest of the arm. So if you want to reset this, other than doing Command Z or whatever, you can just do Option G, which cancels out any positional changes. But if we'd done a rotation, we could do Option R and that would cancel out a rotation. So if you want to kind of just reset any of these transformations, then that's a quick way to do it especially if you've done multiple ones and you don't want to kind of undo all the way back, you can just do that. So I'm going to do the same thing with the ankle bone, this bone down here. So let's come back into edit mode. Let's select this nub here. Let's hit E and Y and drag backwards. And now we've created another kind of control bone there. We're going to select that bone. Again, we're going to select option P and clear parent. Then let's come into pose mode. Let's select this bone, the control bone, and then shift select the bone for the lower leg like that. And then again, we're going to do shift, control, and C to get up the 
inverse kinematics, select inverse kinematics from this menu. And as before, you'll see we've got a dotted line and it goes all the way to the base of the spine again. We don't actually want that. We want it to come only to this bone here. So again, we're going to come to the chain length under bone constraints, if that's not selected. And we're going to set that chain length again to two. And you can see that dotted line ends here now. So if we grab the bone, you can see we can very easily create that natural looking pose for the leg. So again, all I need to do is Alt G to reset the position of that bone. So the steps we need to take now are that we actually need to name all of these bones. And so let's come to this bone here. Let's come to this menu here, the bone menu. So this shoulder bone here, we're going to call shoulder and dot L. So dot lowercase L. And then we're going to do the same thing with this one here. We're going to call it upper arm dot L. So this is very important that we're doing the dot L because when we come to symmetrize it, it will use that left to create the right. If you see what I mean, you'll see what I mean when I, we actually get there. So select this one here and let's call this lower arm dot L. Let's select this and call it hand dot L. Let's select this just, just to keep everything tidy. We don't necessarily need to symmetrize this, but just call this neck, this one head. So let's come down here and let's call this pelvis.l. This one we'll call thigh.l. This one we'll call shin.l and foot. So foot.l. Now we also need to rename our uh, control bones. So let's select this one here and call it arm con. So capital C-O-N, just, just so we can, it's obvious what it is, control bone, dot L. And let's select this one and let's call it leg C-O-N in caps, dot L. So now we're ready to symmetrize the entire uh, armature. So let's just, with any bone selected, let's hit A which will select the entire armature. And then let's come over to edit mode and let's come to the armature menu and let's come down and select symmetrize. And I want you to watch what happens. So our entire left-hand side has been duplicated and we've got everything now on the right-hand side and everything is correctly named. So for example, if I select this bone here, uh, you'll see that's armcon.r. So the final stage is that we need to link our armature to the base geometry. So to do that, we're going to come into object mode. So let's start with the simple one. Let's start with the head. So I'm going to select the head and holding down the shift key, I'm going to select the armature. Now the, I've made the armature protrude through the head, so it's very easy to grab it from here. So shift select that and you see we've got them both selected here. If we come now to pose mode and we select the head bone like that, just select it and don't shift select it and then command and P and then select bone from this menu. And now if we were to grab this bone, you'll see that we can move the head. So there you go. That's the head attached to the armature. So I think the next one to do is the torso. So let's come back to object mode. Let's select the torso. Again, let's shift select the armature by grabbing that at the top there. Let's come back over to pose mode. Now you can get to pose mode by from object mode by doing control and tab. And that's probably quite useful in this case. So again, we need to select the bone that we want to link the torso to, and it's this main root bone here. So select that one, Command and P, and select Bone. Now, the interesting about, thing about this one is it's going to do an awful lot. So if we actually grab that bone, uh, you'll see that um, it's actually moving everything like this. And that's because of the inverse kinematics. There is a problem, though, which is it's not connecting to our pelvis bones. So let's actually fix that now. Let's come back over to edit mode 
And what we need to do is we need to parent these two pelvic bones to the root bone because they don't automatically get attached in the same way that they do when you uh, extrude from the head. So let's select this pelvic bone. Let's shift select the root bone, command P and keep offset. And let's do the same thing with the other one. Select this pelvic bone, shift select the root bone, command and P and keep offset. And now if we come back over to pose mode, this is going to be a lot more fun. You'll see that the legs move together with the root. And this is how I actually did my, my little jumping robot. Obviously I did quite a bit of a tweak with it, but all you need to do really is kind of get the, to get, get him to a basic jump is to use that root bone and to, to bounce him up and down. So really pretty easy and a lot of fun. But obviously we've still got quite a bit of attachment work still to do. So let's work from this side first. Let's come over to object mode. Let's select this arm. Let's zoom out so we can see the armature. Shift select the armature. Come over to pose mode. Select the bone we want to parent to. Command P and select bone. Let's come back over to object mode. Let's select this upper arm, upper arm right. Shift select the armature. Control tab to come into pose mode. Select the bone that we want to parent to. And command P and select bone. Again, let's control tab out of there. Let's select this arm. Let's shift select the armature. Control tab to get back to pose mode. Select this bone. Command P. Select the bone. Control tab again. Select this arm here. Shift select the armature. Control tab to come into pose mode. Select the bone we want to parent to. Command P and select bone. So now we've got everything apart from the legs. So let's control tab to come back to object mode. Let's select this thigh, upper leg right. Again, we need to select the armature. I can actually select it from the, the foot there in actual fact, rather than coming up to the head. And let's control tab to get to pose mode. Select the bone we want to parent to, command P and bone. Control tab again. Let's do the other leg and shift select the armature. Control tab, select the bone we want to parent to. Command P, select bone. We're nearly there. Control tab again. Select this lower leg. Select the armature down here. That's shift selecting it. Control tab to get back to pose mode. Select the bone we want to parent to. Command P, bone. Control tab, let's do the same with the other lower leg. Shift select the armature. Control tab, select the bone we want to parent to. Command P, bone. Control tab, only the two feet remain. So select this foot, select the armature. Control tab, select the foot bone. Command P, bone. Control tab to get back to object mode, select the final foot. Select the armature, shift select the armature, I should say. Control tab, select that foot bone, command P and bone. And now we are good to go. So let's just do a bit of experimentation with this. Let's grab this IK bone and you'll see that our arm is moving nicely like this. And let's try the other arm. That's all good. We know that the head works. We know that the uh, torso works. That's our jumping torso. You can see the legs are now moving along with it. This is all good. So we can grab the leg control bone and we can get him to do whatever we want with that. Let's say Alt G to undo that move. Let's grab the other leg control bone just to make sure everything's working. And yes, you can do some pretty fancy gymnastics as well. So anyway, at this point, you're pretty much ready to animate your character. So you can grab any bone. So I'm grabbing that arm bone and I'm just using G to move it around a bit. And then when I'm happy, I click and then I hit I 
and then set a location and rotation keyframe. Although in that case, it's just a, a location one, doesn't matter, set, set it for both. And then you can move forward to wherever you want and you know set another keyframe and then again I and it'll interpolate between them as you would expect. And you obviously don't you don't have to use only these IK bones, you know, you can use the head bone, rotate that. So there's lots you can do to animate the character. So I'm just going to undo that. But this is a rigging tutorial, not an animation tutorial. Animation is a, a pretty big subject. But I did mention that we would have another look at the elbow and the knee joints. So I'm going to come back into edit mode and let's look at the top view. And what we did with these elbow joints is we kind of positioned them dead center of the actual joint. And you will get a better result if you grab that nub and you just move it back like that. So it's towards the back of the joint rather than in the center of it. And again, if you come to the front view, just move it up so it's above center. And then when you come back to pose mode, you'll see that that's kind of baked in this pre-rotation of the arm. And that's going to make your uh, animation of this joint a little bit easier when you do your inverse kinematics. It's already sort of favoring that direction. And the same thing applies to, you know, you'd need to do the same thing with this joint here on the the other arm. And let's also consider the knee joints. So let's hit three to look at the side view. And let's come again, come back to edit mode. And this knee joint here, it, again, it's best to kind of effectively pre-bend the knee in the direction that the knee goes, because obviously the knee doesn't go that way ever. It will only go this way. So if we kind of move that to the front of the knee, like so, that will assist in the IK to some degree. It's not the complete answer, but you'll see that it's just more likely to bend in the direction you want rather than sort of bending backwards uh, awkwardly. So I've gone through and made those ch small changes to both elbows and both knees. Let's just select the armature and do option G and R to reset any transforms that we might have. I want to now finally just talk about the other way that we can get this rig to be a little bit more stable, and that's to create a pole target for this IK joint. So let's come back over to edit mode. And what I want to do is I want to grab this knee joint here, uh, that, that nub rather, I should say, and I want to hit E and Y, and we want to extrude a new bone out forwards like that. Let's select the bone. Let's do option P and clear parent. And let's just move it along on Y using that handle there, only on Y. That's probably about right. And let's just scale it down a little bit like so. And let's give it a name. So let's come to the bone menu here. It's inherited the name of the thigh, but we don't want to call it that. We want to call it leg and pole, P-O-L-E, and I've made that in caps so it's easier to read, dot L. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over to pose mode and we're going to select this orange shin bone and come down to the bone constraints properties. Here we've got an empty field called pole target. And for that, we're going to select armature for, from the menu, or you could pick it off the scene, but it's much easier to just select it from the menu. And then we need to select the pole target bone. And of course, that is going to be the bone that we've just created. And I need to scroll down here till I find it. So leg pole left, you can see that one there. And now that's created a, a target for that joint. So if we then grab this, You'll see that you hopefully you probably won't see, but what happens is this joint keeps trying to point towards this pole target. And the reality of that is it just makes the whole leg assembly much more manageable when you're coming to animate it. So let's just reset that transformation there. And we would need to do the same thing with all the other joints or all the other IK joints. So the, the other knee, we'd have need to do the same thing. And 
we, let's just do the elbow while we're at it because it's slightly different. So come back over to edit mode. Let's select this nub here. E to extrude and Y for the direction. And we're going to go backwards here like that. Let's select the bone. Option P to clear parent. Let's use the directional handle to move it out somewhere like that. Again, let's scale it down. It doesn't need to be huge. And let's give it a name. So in the bone menu, we can call it arm pole dot left. And then again, we can come over to pose mode. We can select our orange arm bone and come into the bone constraints and the IK. Again, pole target is going to be armature. And from the bone menu, let's use the arrows to bring us down till we find the control that we want. So that's arm pole left. There you go. Now, what you'll notice here is that the arm, the entire arm is rotated uh, in a way that we don't actually want. And to fix that, we need to come to the pole angle and set that to negative 90. And now you can see that the arm is now actually pointing in the right direction. And then if we grab this IK control, we get some nice arm movement. So you'll need to add pole targets for this other elbow and this other knee in, his, in exactly the same way. And then you'll be ready to animate your character. Obviously, the sensible time to have set up these pole targets would have been before symmetrizing the entire armature. But I didn't really want to overcomplicate things at that stage, which is why I've left it till now. And when you actually come to render it, you'll need to make sure that the render button for the armature is turned off. And if you don't want to see the armature in the viewport, you can turn it off using the viewport display button as well. So there you go. Hope that's been interesting. What we've done here is we've made a robot. And if we were rigging a soft bodied human, for example, we would go about it in a, in a rather different way, because rather than rigging individual bits, we'd actually attach the armature to a complete single mesh. And the armature would deform the mesh depending on the weights of the individual groups of vertices to which it's attached. So it's a slightly different process, and I will show you that another time. But I think doing a robot is a good way of getting started because humans are pretty complicated. Anyway, thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.